The Veiler is one of those characters an average player would avoid for fear of him being a time bomb, or couldn't put in the party because you're already full, or not even be aware of because he's easily skippable, even though he's the least interesting out of the group, and the least fun since you can't equip him with weapons or armor, he certainly connects with the lore and history of the main character. Think of him as a masculine version of Deonara, whereas even though she represents love and longing, he is the distilled version of an individual seeking vengeance, or in this case, justice. He's not as crazy as Ignis, but definitely more relevant than Anna, just not plot-wise. In fact, he's totally optional. The average party I played with consisted of Mort, Nikon, Anna, Fall from Grace, and Nordum. This just happened to be the same party as was listed in the PDF written novelized account of the game. That combination provided to me the most comic relief, and minus magic from Ignis, the most gameplay options. Whereas the most conversations with the above will be comedic, Valer will constantly be trying to remember who you are and ask your companions, and they'll all try and shrug him off, but Failure is someone you should at least try during one playthrough, as fatalistic and one-sided as he might be. Valor doesn't have much in the way of providing anything to the plot, like tickets or points or twists, but has three major roles that I can see. One, he's a living example of the terror that the Nameless One's previous incarnation has wrought upon the world. This is important, as that's kind of the point of the majority of the setting, and along with the theme of redemption, works just okay. He's also a literal character who's hunting you down and for what you did to him, even if he doesn't know who you are or remember much of his previous life. Two, he subverts a few of the key fighting scenarios you can't avoid by being able to get the conclusion you may have wanted and then some. Also being a force for justice, a lawful neutral alignment, he'll ensure you have, for the most part, a lawful good or neutral disposition. Even if he wants to kill everything he generally sees, including you, when you do things he doesn't approve of, or whenever your alignment turns evil, he will come and try and kill you. And three, he's perhaps the simplest and strongest tank and fighter in the game, save for the Nameless One himself. Being a servant of justice in a previous life as a mercy killer, he's become the literal animated armor trope. Valor has lost his humanity, and thus his sole role is to bring justice to the multiverse, whatever exactly that means. Probably just a lot of dead people. If Grace is the personification of the Sensates, Valor would be that of the mercy killers. However, via a logic bomb, you can argue that the law, the subjective concept of rules of behavior, are unspecific to his universal concept, whatever that is, and thus rendering law, the law, or justice, utterly meaningless. This includes his crimes of killing people since the law is now irrelevant. This causes Valor to cease to exist. This is another example of how the idea of the power of belief, and that the nameless one has the ability to influence existence just by willing it so, whether it's a memory of arguing with a person, like part of a faction called the Sign of One, a group who argue their enemies into non-existence, to prove that he doesn't exist, or bring something into his existence like your fabricated character Adon. This strengthens the past concept that the Nameless One was a force to be reckoned with, and Valor has lost, or was lost, under our cunning, for the second and final time. He was nothing more than a stepping stone, or at worst, a minor irritation to our goals. As this story is one of redemption or learning about our previous problems, it's ironic to have the most dedicated hunter of our crimes to help us out in correcting our greatest mistake. Near the end of the story, it is revealed that the practical incarnation was the one who trapped Valor in prison, the same one that killed Deonara. And if our alignment is not true neutral, and Valor was part of our party in the final confrontation, the transcendent one will argue for Valor to turn against us, another part of a ticking time bomb. If your alignment is true neutral, it is implied that Valor dies out of loyalty to you. Arise, Valor. I have need of you. A great injustice has been done. To the second point, that is subverting gameplay options, Valor will always do the lawful thing, which usually involves killing unlawful things. Out of the four confrontations that are unavoidable, Valor can subvert the last three. In the battle against Trius, you can argue Trius to beg forgiveness from his fathers. You maintain your good alignment, and when Trius is about to leave, Valor comes by and kills him, allowing you to redeem Trius and kill him, get the experience, and his rather powerful celestial fire weapon. If, for whatever reason, Ignis isn't alive when you hit the Fortress of Regrets, you'll be fighting Valor in his place regardless. 
When meeting the transcendent one, if you killed Valor via arguing him into non-existence, you can say belief can change the nature of the man, and even unmake the transcendent one, which grants the best ending. So he's not exactly plot integral, but it allows for one of the options in the ending. Know that I am your fate, and fate carries an executioner's axe. I'm gone. And finally, if you just want to kill the Transcendent One, if Valor is still on your side, and you decide to go with a combat route, and if you trick the Transcendent One into resurrecting all or one of your companions, you can then tell Valor about the great injustice that the Transcendent One has done, granting Valor 2 million experience points, plus 3 to strength, and his dexterity and constitution set to 25. This is very similar to what happens to Dakon if you resurrect him, which just continues to show how awesome Dakon still is. And when we finally defeat the Transcendent One, Valor will remind us to know that should you escape your sentence, I shall find you, Nameless One. The hand of justice shall not be stayed. Which is ultimately the point of the plot, for us to finally let go of our immortality and receive the punishment we have been waiting for. Valor, like Deanara, is the literal ghost in armor, one whose armor is made of vengeance and not of love, who is hunting us down for the crimes we have committed, and the people whose lives we have destroyed. He just happens to be carrying a giant battle axe. What can change the nature of a man? Form. 